spent many an hour in the rigger talking with Tom. Boat had reopened that building there as a cinema if I won the lottery. Never ever gone the lottery, so that might be a bit of a problem in that story, but never mind. Going to be talking about horror films today. My favourite, uh, some of my favourite horror films, it does have to be said. I'll give myself three rules to make it even more tricky and thick enough. I've got to have seen the film at the cinema. I've got to own the film on VHS. And I've got to have kept the ticket stub, so it'll be good evidence uh, right there. But yeah, this building behind me. I always remember it as being Zanzibar. It was called the Ritz for a long time. Or Ritzy, I should say. And uh, I think the only people, the only reason people used to go to this nightclub was because the pubs in town used to close really early and this would have a, like, a late liquor licence and people would pour out of it at 2am when it was like last orders and people would be fighting, throwing up, women would be crying because the boyfriend had kissed somebody else but uh, yeah good times, good old Zanzibar, it will be missed. <laughs> Here's a film I've got a real soft spot for, a late 90s horror classic. It's Jim Gillespie's I Know What You Did Last Summer, based on the 1973 novel by Lois Duncan. It's about a group of teenagers that go out party one night and uh, even though the driver's sober, there's a drunk guy who accidentally spills beer on him and they run over a guy and they uh, dump the body that guy comes back and goes around killing everybody. Spoiler alert. It's got a great 90s soundtrack. And it's just one of those really iconic films. I actually went to see it twice. Speaking of which, let's have a look at the ticket. It's the 13th of December, 1997. It's uh, 10 to 9, £4. What does £4 get you nowadays? Maybe some of these. Whatever these actually are. <laughs> now we're talking about the big guns here. It's probably one of my favourite films of all time. John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness. Remember go seeing it just down the road at the Onion Festival Park. Even though it was 1995, remember it was like it was yesterday. And partly because it had an amazing twist ending for want of a better. Phrase, the main concept of the story is it's about this author named Sutter Kane that writes these novels. And it's a series of novels. And each one makes you get progressively crazier, like you'll just you know, get paranoid and you become like a murderer. And then you'll actually turn into a big tentacle monster, H.P. Lovecraft style. It's got Charlton Heston in it and uh, Sam Neill. But uh, like I say, it's about these books and you think, well, it, it, you know, it's, if you don't read in the concept of the story, you would never get caught out by it anyway. But in the film, Sam Neill says to John Trent, well, what about people who don't read? And Charlton Heston says, well, there's a movie coming out in a couple of months. And then you realise that you've watched the movie version of one of the books in the story, because the book is actually called In the Mouth of Madness, and it's just a great movie. The sound was awesome. Uh, like the John Carp's theme tune was amazing. And I don't know why, this is such a boring story even by my standards. But I remember walking back from Festival Park just down the road when I went to see it. And I remember walking all the way up here on the way to where I used to live a couple of miles down the road. And I remember looking at this post office and it's hardly changed since 1995. Oh my God, who the hell cares? Talking about proper classic horror movie now. It was released in October 1974. It was Toby Hooper's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And this might be hard to believe if you didn't live in the UK, but it didn't get a proper release until 1999, March 1999, no less in the UK. Two different BBFC certifiers banned it 
Stephen Murphy and James Furman. I was lucky enough to see twice locally. It was at uh, the Odeon in Stoke and the Stoke Film Theatre. Uh, they're the uh, two tickets. Absolute classic film. Can you believe it or not, Daniel Pearl, who worked on this film, also worked on the remake as well. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Here's one film that I absolutely love. It's The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari from 1920. Lucky enough to see this projected with a live band actually doing a score to it, which is uh, kind of common for silent movies back in the day or 2010 as it was when I saw this film. One thing about talking about years past was I was kind of surprised when I went to the Internet Movie Database and this was like about 10 years ago as well, that everybody's name that I clicked on had died, which was uh, kind of shocking, which uh, shouldn't be shocking to anybody who's good at maths, which I am not. And it was one of the films that really opened my eyes when I was at college to how many films that I wasn't aware of because it was part of like, the German Expressionist movement and things like that. Also as well, it's very reminiscent, the main character, the Sonambulist character, is a bit like Jason or Michael Myers from the Friday 13th and Halloween movies if you compare them side by side because the black clothing and the white mask and the big knife and everything. But it's a bit cold now so I think we should go indoors and get the comment lever warmed up. Just coming from the cold, thought I'd put a bit of SNK's King of the Monsters on, warm up a little bit. This is the uh, part of the show though that people are saying is like ITV's first post. It's the uh, comment lever section of the show. Let's get that first comment on screen right now. Changing gear in here. Uh, truck or something, is it? Uh, first comment here, it's by Race Benz. I usually find an accent tolerable, but this sounds like British Ebonics. Uh, don't know what Ubonic says, I'll have to get the uh, dictionary out, if I can actually find one. Uh, just guessing of course, I think Ubonics must be a compliment about saying about how my voice is really cool and like a Optimus Prime or Peter Cullen or something, but uh, thanks for the complimentary comment. Here's the second comment. As it's the second comment, I think I'll use both hands on the comment lever. Here we go. Drum roll, please, as uh, Will Smith once said on Summertime. <laughs> oh, here we go, Barbara Matthews. It's about VHS too. VHS is definitely still alive. Me and my family love it. We have a massive collection. Excellent. Physical media is where it's at. We love to collect all forms of media and all kinds of physical things. I wish I could get a copy of Deadpool on VHS. Uh, I don't think there is an official copy, although some newer films do come out on VHS, but I'm sure it'd be possible to get it on VHS if you if you have the technology like Six Million Dollar Man and can't beat somebody who likes uh, VHS, so good one Barbara. Although, uh, check out your local streaming services, which are very good. And now, <laughs> that was a weird one, <laughs> now is the third comment. We all know sometimes the third section is always the best, like The Godfather Part 3, which I still haven't seen. Here we go. Bye bye, isn't it? Oh, it's Eric G. Long time viewer and poster. Thanks very much for commenting over the years, I really appreciate it, thank you. Uh, the comment is, brilliant as always, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you do even. It would be good if I could actually read the sentence out, wouldn't it? But uh, think, thank you for doing that, and I will keep doing what I'm doing and uh, keep it locked. Thanks for watching The Legends of Cherry Hill. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing.